Welcome everybody to the uh, first PXL webinar uh, go to uh, meet the, the team um, event and it's going to be quite fun. What we're going to be doing today is um, we'll try to keep this to an hour or so at the most and uh, hopefully this is an opportunity for you to meet the team of uh, PXL and I'm going to tell a little bit of a, a story in a minute about how we got started and so forth and the things that we do, the websites that I've got running and uh, so forth. Uh, then uh, I'll introduce uh, everybody in regards to uh, the team. Uh, first off will be Chris, and then Jeff, Michael Durr. Michael's going to do and talk a little bit about the videos we're doing. Uh, yeah. We have Mark Stiegel, who is our go-to printer and paper guy, and uh, he will uh, have a lot to say, um, most likely about some of the cool projects he's working on and the frustrations he's having. And for all those guys out there that are Mac people, um, Mark is having an epiphany that he might want to switch to Windows. I think it's our job to make sure that he doesn't do that. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's keep moving here because I, I want to try to stay on agenda for everybody. Um, you have an agenda? Yes, you can see it. It's on your screen. <laughs> Unlike the way you want to do things, Jeff, I, I have a little organization here. Alon <laughs> writes a lot of articles for us. He'll be talking about what he's been doing and uh, workshops and so forth. Then I'll introduce uh, my, my dear wife, Deborah Fadley Raber, and you know, what she handles. Then we've also got Jack Shepler, and you'll understand more about Jack in a minute when I talk about how PhotoPXL got uh, started and where we're headed. And then we can do questions and answers and uh, so forth when we're done. Uh, this is a, a webinar series because we had more people than we could uh, accommodate in a meeting kind of thing. So uh, the only people that can be seen are the panelists that are uh, hosting this event. And um, therefore, uh, if you want to ask questions, you need to use the Q&A area and uh, Deborah won't be monitoring those. And you can also use the chat area and uh, we'll be looking at those every now and then. So uh, let's get going on this a little bit. Um, what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about PXL. Um, <laughs> we are now one year old and we've had one heck of a fantastic year. Um, I want to thank all the readers and all the guys and, and gals that have worked really hard to make this part of their site, but make it a site that essentially is the community that I always thought and always wanted to see us have uh, for photographers. And we're growing every day. Uh, we went to somewhere uh, in what's called Alexa ratings to four and a half million a year ago, and we're around 340,000 now, heading up to the 200,000 mark probably by the end of August, and hopefully we can keep on going. Um, that's a very impressive number for a site that's only one year old. And um, it's because we've got great contributors and we've got great readers. And I hope it is a friendly place to visit. Um, unlike uh, uh, <laughs> Mark, who brought up the politics, we will keep politics out of the site and we'll try to keep politics out of our discussion today. As far as I'm concerned, the only thing that's important is photography. And for me, I think photography is the magic bullet, the magic button that bridges all the divisive kind of uh, things that are going on in today's society because this is the one thing I know that makes me happy uh, and makes everybody happy and uh, everybody in the whole world is on the same page when it comes to photography. There is no divisive uh, borderlines um, and I think this is just where we want to be. Of course, unless you're an icon or Canon user and then it might get a little crazy, but um, you know, that's the way it is. So let's, let's talk about where PXL came from. Um, in January of 2019, as most of you know, um, I was with basically without a job. And so was uh, Chris and Deborah and everybody else. And we won't go into the details about what happened, but you know, I had some decisions to make. And Ask me. Some other time. <laughs> um, any case, um, well, I had a really good time at that other site and um, it was a great experience. We had to figure out what we were going to do, you know, we'll retire or go do something different or whatever. But I really liked what we were doing. And I really had an idea that, you know, we could turn a website into a community for those that have a passion about photography and really make a go at it. So in January, I got a bunch of my friends together and um, I'm going to share a screen here. And we sat around a table. That's your business plan. <laughs> and <laughs> so there was about six or seven of us, I and mean, this is a two-night project, trying to decide 
what PXL should be and where we wanted to go and what we wanted to do. And so the first really thing is we had to find a URL that would work. And we sat there with our iPhones and iPads and kept coming up with names only to find out that they're already used. And then Drew Altolfer, who was with us from phase one, visiting and doing some videos, uh, came up with the idea of uh, basically photo PXL. We'll take the acronym for pixel, which confuses the crap out of Jeff, but it's PXL, not pixel, however he says it. Um, photo pixel. Pixel. But in any case, pixel. it is photo PXL. And I thought I'd share with you the, uh, the menus that we used that night to make this, this, um, this, this dream come true. Everyone had a menu, and we were all sketching and talking. And uh, this was at a really fun little tavern close by. Uh, Chris has been there, and those that are you know been visiting, sometimes we try to take you there. It's a really friendly place to go. And you can see all the doodles that uh, went into you know kind of figuring it out once we kind of figured out the name. And we sat there at that table, and we bought the URL while we were eating dinner and drinking. And so um, that's how the the PXL got started. And, you know, we kind of messed around with a whole bunch of ideas and um, kind of was trying to look at using the PXL part of Photo PXL as um, our branding label, PXL. So anything we would do would be, you know, PXL print or PXL editorial or anything along those lines. So PXL would be the branding part of, of we would use. Then what happened is then everybody left. I had to kind of figure out how and what I wanted to do. And I had this idea of how to try to put everything together. And on the old site, everything was in pieces because it was an old site. And so we had a chance to build something from scratch. And, you know, I wanted to build it quickly, too. Um, the development of this um, took uh, a little bit of time, and it actually went pretty quickly. Uh, Jack Shepler, who is on here, you can probably see his, his image. He'll talk at the end. Uh, he was one of a number of companies that I went to see, and he was also a very good example of how you succeed. And essentially, we went to see a lot of people. Deborah was with me, and we visited website companies, and this was the, uh, the layout plan that we had on how we wanted to do things. Um, and there are obviously a lot of people that thought they could do this or that, and they weren't really listening to what I wanted. They didn't understand that I wanted something simple in sections, kind of old fashioned, but up to date and modern and interconnect everything. So, you know, when you sign on, you know, you sign on and you log on, uh, you'll get a screen that tells you what's new since the last time you logged on. You can add photographs. There's a messaging system where you can talk to the other members. Uh, all the stuff is interconnected in such a way and it's all built to grow further. So this was kind of the, the wireframe that we had. And of course, you know, when I would sit down with a group, I would explain what, you know, this was and how I saw it going and what we wanted to do with different phases. And, um, you know, we, we were looking at some outrageous prices and some people were telling us we wouldn't succeed without them. And uh, it, was, it was quite the story on shopping for a development site. In any case, we found AOK, -okay, which is the company that we used, and they could do it in a time frame we wanted at a price that we were comfortable with. And uh, we've been going fast and furious ever since. And at the very end, when Jack talks, he'll tell you a little bit about two of the ideas, a couple of the ideas we have for moving forward. And of course, you can also give us your feedback on that. So this is where it all began. And it was quite fun, um, quite an adventure. And the fact that we could accomplish this in a period of just about from the time we signed on, it took us a month or two to, to, to visit everybody and come up with things and decide who we wanted to go with. He basically had this site up and running in five to six months. And uh, that was quite an accomplishment. And within a few months after that, we were all set to go. And uh, what's really cool is, you know, we have the form and a uh, community page where you can basically make your own photo layout page and all sorts of cool things like that. We also have a YouTube channel, which we're uh, growing. And of course we could use everybody's help there is when uh, to, to help grow this, this site. Uh, YouTube is a very important part of our, our, our program and uh, that pretty much sits on the responsibility of Michael Durr, who you'll hear from in a minute. Uh, and we're growing and we've got a lot of projects. It's too bad the pandemic hit because it really has set us back quite a bit in what we could do. Uh, some of the projects require traveling and you know, working in the studio with uh, multiple cameras and uh, multiple people and doing tutorials, but we hope to be able to do those all sometime in the very near future. So um, 
we've got the, that site uh, working on things. Let's see here, we, what else do we have to share? At this point, uh, Chris, if you don't mind uh, telling us a little bit about our history and friendship and things together and what you're kind of working on this, that would be great. Well, as I think anybody who was uh, familiar with the luminous landscape during the time that we were there, you and I were pretty close partners as I had been with Michael. And um, so when that blue, like of dust gone, I um, blew in the same direction as you. So that was great. That was the best thing that happened. <laughs> um, <Michael>. about, <laughs> about two, three years ago, I decided to pull back from doing a lot of videos. And those are very ably looked after now by Michael. So I haven't been doing videos. Um, the most that I have involvement really is with the forum. And that's very lightweight, um, my involvement, that is. Um, and I squash the odd spammer, as does Jeremy, as does Kevin. Um, and uh, keep the thing fairly tidy. What I'd love to see is actually more people get involved with the forum. Um, it's still relatively quiet, um, and but like you know, it's it's growing bit by bit. The about the site, which is the very first topic or or sub forum, you'll see it at, at the home page of the forum, has um, one thread which details how you should upload files in terms of pictures. Um, navigation can be somewhat complex. There appears to be what is a um, breadcrumb trail once you've gone into a, a couple of uh, message boards, um, but it doesn't really work when you're going backwards. So the best thing to do if you get confused and you find a screen which says no forums is to go back to the actual forums link and then drill back in again. Um, and that has caused, oh, some confusion over the past year. And uh, I'm not sure. It's because I use containers, which are those little blue bars. Um, and they come up as forums in the breadcrumb trail. And when you click on them, they, uh, if they don't contain any forums, they will say that, no forums. But uh, it's um, fairly simple to work around. You just go back to the top and, and drill back in again. Um, I think that's really all I have to say, other than please come visit the forum. If you come to the forum or you're logged on and you want to see what's new, uh, there is a, a section that you can pull down and do topic freshness or new since last sign on and so forth. Yeah, so you don't have to wait. That's, through everything. that's, that's a fairly uh, good uh, way to look at what is new, um, just to look at the freshness. And you don't have to be logged in, incidentally to see how, how fresh the topics are. So one of the submenus at the top in the white area of the screen is called forum views. And if you go to it, depending on what device you're on, you will see a, either a drop down or a little um, thing with a plus sign next to it, which gives you the various options of the forum views. Um, and uh, the topic expressions is one that I use all the time. Um, unlike on Lula, where we had uh, see new posts since last visit, which is also available here. I just tend to uh, use the topic expressionist, and, and uh, that gives me a nice quick way of getting to see what is new. Um, in your post, you can also add pictures um, and oh, attach yeah. photos. Uh, uh, there, there's a number of, a lot of things to jazz it all up and everything. And you can also select an option, right, Chris, to uh, be notified of new posts. So you can get an email of somebody, like you're in dire need and you can't fix something um, and you don't want to have to sign on every hour to look. Uh, you can get notified, for example, if somebody answers the question for you on the form uh, by email so you know to sign back on and see what the answer is. So we, we think this is pretty good form uh, software. It's easy. It's a little different, more up to date, and uh, we're pretty happy with it. Um, also a, a note, you know, Chris, Chris is, <laughs> how do they say it in the, uh, the organized crime family, consigliatory or something along those lines? Um, Chris for years now has, um, uh, been keeping me 
<laughs> should I say, I'd like to say straight, but every time I kind of narrow off and come to no, wander off and have a, some sort of crazy idea, <laughs> Chris kind of reels me back in and puts me back on the path. Because if any of you know me, I've, I've got, um, I'm, I'm always thinking, and um, sometimes those thoughts, um, while they might be kind of cool, they're a little off center, and, you know, Chris is my grounding guy. You know, he makes sure that I stay put. Um, uh that's done that over a glass of wine. Yeah, usually. <laughs> uh, for all those, that, you know, I'm I'm having a beer tonight. Or I don't know how I could get through this tonight. We're <laughs> sitting out. It's my first time. Yeah, in front of yeah, yeah. But it's uh, kind of fun to do that. Chris, you got a question out there, I see. Um, yeah, I, I did answer it privately. It has to do with the Luminous Landscape Video Journal, which, no, I'm not doing anything on the Luminous Landscape Video Yep, so, and, and yes, there's a pile of stuff which is unpublished, but they'll never get used since I don't own it any longer. Anyway, so that answers. But we, we please know that between Chris and Michael, if and when this pandemic ends, um, there's a possibility of doing some pretty cool things. And um, uh, we'll talk a little more about those after we get through everybody uh, on the list here. Anyway, let me t introduce Jeff, uh, because I know he's probably going to I don't need no stinking introduction. Then <laughs> Oh, go ahead and say something nice about me. Well, I'm going to try to say something nice about you, but sometimes it's hard. And uh, I, I work really hard thinking about... And sometimes it isn't, so go ahead. I have to say that it, that is one of the more boring shirts that I've seen you wear, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff has thrown away his Hawaiian shirt. You've, you've allowed Kevin to take over the shirt department. I, I thought something was wrong, and I couldn't put my finger on it. You just did. You wouldn't want to either, Mark. Um, let me just finish real quick about Jeff. Um, I've known him for years. I've traveled to many corners of the, the planet with Jeff. And um, one of my more memorable times was Jeff was doing a workshop with me in Australia. And it was quite an adventure. And uh, we get out in the middle of uh, the outback. And I'm talking the real outback. And uh, they couldn't heat up any water for his coffee. He was so desperate. He opened up uh, a little package of uh, Bavia or the, that, that Starbucks. Starbucks Bavia. And he just dumped it in his mouth like that. And I was like, wow. And then he actually, believe it or not, jumped about three feet off the ground. We have an amazing picture somewhere. I, I, I looked for it, couldn't locate it. Um, and uh, it was quite a, a nice time there. But this was an adventure where we had bugs the size of water bottles and uh, bugs coming under our chair, scorpions Scorpion. in the dining room. It was um, quite an opportunity. And then I've, uh, the only time I've ever had a flat tire in the last 20 years, I had to have it with Jeff in the middle of the Palouse. So we've had a lot of adventures and fun. But two Jeff old guys couldn't figure out how to change the fucking tire. We had that call <laughs> auto service, and the guy came two hours later, although it was nice because we had a lot of people stop and ask if they could help. And, and, and it's like, no, uh, we've got somebody coming. And the guy that came is like, I don't know, two inches shorter and 20 years older than Kevin and I. Uh, but fortunately, what he had was a, a, a floor jack that he could jack up. We were on the side of the road on gravel, and it would have been difficult to get the big truck up off the ground. But uh, So go ahead, Kevin, finish off. Well, anyway, that was quite an experience. You should have seen, it was like, here's two guys that are really technical and know a lot about digital imaging just trying to put the jack together before we realized this was beyond the capability of the two of us. <laughs> the jack handle was a fucking like, manual. I read the manual. <laughs> I know. Just reading the manual. I'm trying to snap the thing together. You know, we even had a cop that stopped. And, uh, of course, there was a place that I wanted to visit called the Bells. It's a, a farm where this guy collected all these school bells from all over you know, the Northwest. And uh, we drove all over the fucking Palouse trying to find this place with bells. We finally found it because oh, okay. I stopped and asked directions. Well, that's, you know, it's when I have this firm belief is one of the man rules and anybody that's a, a, a you know, a man on this um, chat probably will understand this is that men don't ask for directions. You can be yeah. misplaced, but you don't <laughs> ask for directions. That's the guy's rule. Yeah, exactly. And so Jeff was in the passenger seat and he just yelled at me, pull over because this guy was like getting mail out of the mailbox and, he asked, and I didn't feel too bad because it was him asking. Um, and uh, we, we were not too far away from the target, so my, my <laughs> sense of direction was almost getting us there. We found the fucking bells. Yeah, all right. Well, Jeff, anyway, please take it away and uh, tell us a little bit about some of the things we've been working okay. on. 
Oh. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know the Pixel Mafia, I'm the godfather. And Kevin is a consigliere. Uh, Alan is a friend of ours. Uh, Mark is a friend of ours. Uh, but it really is a group of people that kind of really like one another, like photography and digital imaging. And uh, so we kind of get together and do things uh, usually on behalf of the industry. Um, so somebody posted, here's the um, <clears throat> forum. Somebody actually posted Jeff Griffin. And I don't think Jeff actually showed up, but he didn't realize that I was a member of the team. <laughs> so I actually posted that, uh, well, I did two articles for uh, Photo Pixel. Get it? Photo Pixel. Yeah, well, um, which is more. two more articles than I actually did for um, Luminous Landscape. So, first article was Happy Birthday, uh, Adobe Photoshop. February 19th, 1990 is when Photoshop 1 shipped in my portraits of, of Thomas and John. Uh, and as it turns out, uh, for one reason or another, Tamara Raw shipped on February 19th, 2003. And uh, we were all down in Antarctica, but uh, Lightroom One shipped in February of uh, 2007, I think. Uh, and guess what day of the, of the week, of, of the month that shipped, if, if somebody guessed, February 19th, they'd be correct. So February 19th, we should all get together and, and thank Thomas uh, for what he's done for the industry. Uh, and so the other article that I did was Carl Corey, who was a friend of mine, um, uh, used to be a commercial photographer here in Chicago. He and I were competitors, uh, friendly competitors. But uh, uh, so we actually ended up uh, becoming good friends and and he's one of those guys, I've known him basically since I've been in Chicago. Uh, and uh, he actually won a Guggenheim Fellowship last year and uh, has done a uh, really interesting uh, project called The Strand. So check the article. Um, so just to point out that I am a member of the team, uh, I like to call up and give Kevin shit uh, whenever I see him. Um, uh, Thanks, Jeff. Screwing the pooch. Screwing the pooch, I'll say. Yep, well, Somewhat nice. people doing that. <laughs> but then the other thing is, Kevin talked about, uh, I've got an article in the works. Should I do a preview of it, Kevin? Please do. Tell them what we would, especially the big epic one. Okay, so oh, one God. of the things about Kevin is that, that when we travel together, uh, fortunately, I get to sit in the passenger seat and complain and usually do navigation, otherwise we get fucking lost. Um, but uh, travels with Kevin, uh, last year at the Digital uh, Fine Arts Summit with Alan, uh, Kevin and I came out and uh, uh, we both presented. So uh, we actually decided to uh, rent a car together, which was a fucking mistake because he drove the whole time. He wouldn't let me drive, except for towards the end. Well, you uh, so this, off the road. There was a reason why. Yeah. Uh, this, well, you were sleeping. Uh, but this is my little short story about uh, travels with Kevin, and it's going to be an upcoming story. So uh, drive along in this big, I don't know, I guess he thought we needed this great big, huge, uh, it was a suburban or something. I don't know what the hell it was. But the funny thing is Kevin will stop and sh photograph just about anything. But the funny thing is he actually got a neat shot. I don't have a copy of that. Uh, he got a neat shot of this. Uh, and of course, you know, he's eye to the viewfinder a lot. Uh, in fact, he doesn't actually pay close attention to what's happening around him. I had to point out that I was about ready to grab him in the nuts. <laughs> and then he found out and you notice he, he moved out of the way. <laughs> ah, shadow play. That's good, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, always looking up. Oh, look, something to photograph. Let's go there. So, interesting thing. I think he's got a photograph of me 
photographing this. I had to lay down. The thing is about, I don't know, a foot and a half tall. Uh, so back in the car, we actually found this. <clears throat> he decided he wanted to go see a brothel in Nevada. So we saw this sign along the highway. So we stopped and got off. And of course, he saw this arrow, and apparently, he he's he gets um, uh, fixated on things like this. So he ended up having to stop and photograph this arrow. And I can't tell you how many photographs of Kevin's butt I have, but he seems to bend over a lot to photograph. <laughs> so we did also find an old uh, fire uh, truck, which was pretty cool. Uh, uh, Kevin is a um, ex or former uh, fireman. Uh, and I guess you went around and lit fires, Kevin, is that? Oh, no, I was putting them out, Jeff. Oh, putting them out, putting them out, okay. So you were an unfireman. Um, yeah, okay. um, we found this bar, which was really funny. Uh, you know, Kevin kind of looks normal and straight. And with my hair back, I could almost pass for a Trump supporter. But uh, it was this weird little bar and uh, uh, just weird little pictures. There we go. <laughs> uh, so we did actually find the Cherry Patch Ranch. Uh, which was a brothel, uh, otherwise known as a whorehouse. And uh, um, just to, um, Deborah, we didn't actually go in because they were closed. So um, Kevin got disappointed, but he had to get pictures of this thing. So then we found a doom, which was actually pretty cool. We went out. There's Kevin. He looks like Lawrence of Arabia, lost in the dunes. Um, had to have a, a tumbleweed to give them some shade. But if you look at the shadow, it's like tumbleweed. <laughs> so we finally got to Death Valley, and Kevin is, I don't know what the hell he's fucking photographing. He's just uh, always aiming his camera somewhere. Oh, he had an idea. So that's actually what we were shooting, and this is a uh, iPhone panel, so it was not a, a, a big, it was artist palette, right, Kevin? Right. That's so right. then we're off in the morning. One of the problems with photographing with Kevin is Kevin ends up getting in other people's photographs all the time. So cool. we're on, on a Zabritsky Point, and I'm looking down there, and I could tell it was Kevin because he's got his goofy fucking stupid hat on. <laughs> there he is. So I had him all wave at me. Uh, but I've got a lot of my shots that Kevin has uh, ruined because he's, he's ended up being in them. There is content aware you can use, Jeff. Yeah, but, you know, I don't want to manipulate my images. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, this was also one of the panels. This was beautiful. Um, uh, and then um, I, I bet you guys didn't know that there was water in Death Valley. A lot of people looked at this and, and were, were, some guy actually said, where'd you find water? And it was like, it was just the, the car hood of the uh, uh, truck we were in. I would have to go under the microscope light. Yes. Just stay, stay there. <laughs> where, where is Ellen going? <laughs> Never mind. His glasses broke. So he's put glasses his, broke? Yeah, he's putting, re putting the screw back in his glasses. He'll be back in a minute. Uh, and then Kevin did a little thing on iPhone uh, photography. Um, uh, you know, Mr. Phase One is now shooting with an iPhone, uh, which is fine. So then we back in the road and then. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we went by that one quick. <laughs> I could see right up your nostrils, mate. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. Jeff um, thinks art photography is shooting from the window at 80 miles an hour. Um, <laughs> good job, Jeff. Oh, just a second. There we go. Um, and apparently, Kevin was fixated on massage services, but he also did not take advantage of this. Uh, this was in Beatty. And, oh, sorry, this is not Kevin. This is another ass. <laughs> 
you, you made friends with that guy. I have a picture. Yes, he liked me. Uh, in fact, you've got a nice picture of me with with uh, the ass. Yeah. Uh, but again, Kevin photographing with his iPhone. Uh, now, now I of course, I should clarify, we, Jeff. Uh, I shoot with the iPhone so that I can mark on the map where the picture was taken. Yeah. I also, you know, address my huge social media fans. Yeah, on your multitude of websites yeah. that okay. you have. Uh, but of course, you know, we're out there and we see a warning uh, sign for rattlesnakes. And of course, Kevin goes out to try to find them. Photographing wood with his iPhone. Oh, he found a little piece of glass. Uh, he actually got a neat shot of this while I was shooting him shooting it. But again, Kevin's butt. My apologies. Uh, then... Um, uh, uh, Dante's Peak at sunrise. That was a nice morning. That fucking camera beep. You didn't like that beep. That's how I know that I'm in focus. Really windy up there. Well, it's a it's a night home, so it doesn't have a you know. Yeah. There we go. So there's our uh, there's our panel. This is an iPhone panel, and of course Kevin is in my shot uh, with his uh, little fucking beeping camera. Uh, this was the HDR. Uh, uh, multi uh, stitch that I put together that morning. So then uh, Kevin and I hooked up with uh, Natalie and uh, uh, Hélène, Hélène Rio. He's French, if you didn't know. Um, uh, yeah, but we only hooked up for this was where the fighter planes would come up and, and kill people or something. I don't remember. It was on the way out of uh, Death Valley. Well, they they uh, fly then, down the valley there. Actually, one crashed yeah. a week or two before us. Yeah, yeah. It's called Star War Canyon. That's yeah. the cute name. Yeah. So then there's uh, Nat Natalie getting kissed by uh, her favorite guys, I guess. Kevin again it's photographing. Saying. It's a Kevin, If you don't know Kevin, he is absolutely in love with rust. Everywhere he can find rust, he'll stop and take pictures. Uh, also, uh, lonely trees. He'll That's stop and take pictures tree. of trees. Yeah, we're now. Uh, this was Alabama Hills, which was a glorious morning. Uh, I I don't normally love sunrises. Uh, the reason I don't really love sunrises is you don't know what it's going to look like, but you got to get up early to figure out. So I much like. Uh, prefer sunsets because you can see it coming and then drive home in the dark. Uh, but we had a glorious sunrise. In the Alabama hills. Yeah, that was a beautiful day. Great way to start the day. Well, the best time to photograph the Alabama Hills from that location is sunrise. Because you get the light from the east side. Yeah, you were all photographing that little arch or something. Yeah, right? yeah we, saw, we could see you in the distance. Yeah? We, we didn't mess up your shot, did we? <laughs> no, not at all, no. <laughs> we had all the place to ourselves. Uh, and then we, we drove up the mountain um, to... to to actually, we found this beautiful waterfall, which I don't have in here, but uh, a lot of people. And then we did Mono Lake, and I got to tell you, it was magical because we started that morning at the Ama, uh, Bama Hills with clouds. I, I just love clouds. I go to the southwest, and all I see are fucking blue sky. Um, so I really love clouds in the sky. And we had a, a, a great shot. Uh, this is actually an iPhone uh, panel, so it's it's not 
you can see what it looks like straight. And then this is an HDR uh, panel merge off of the uh, C7. So this would go really big. Uh, then back in the car, Kevin driving on the way to Yosemite. And we stopped. This was not real early in the morning, but it was fairly early in the morning. Still looks like he hasn't washed. <laughs> that was such a cool trip. Yeah. Notice this camera move, Chris. Aren't you proud of me? Very good. Look, hey, Deborah, just so you can actually see, now that you're seeing these pictures, I actually work really hard when I'm on one of these trips. I never stop taking pictures. Well, it's no different than when you're at home. No, probably not, but, you know, there I am. Uh-oh, car coming, <laughs> my butt sticking out in the road. <laughs> so, um, almost done. Come on. There we go. Oh, have to show this in honor, you know, of... Uh, Ansel Adams, uh, we had to stop in to the Ansel Adams uh, gallery, and there's Kevin. Uh, we did uh, tunnel view, of course, in early morning. We, didn't, we weren't up there, but we were up there at about sunrise. Yeah, about. And, of course, Kevin has to check his fucking email so that he can take posts. He was making posts on his various and you know, sundry websites. I was reading uh, that. Kevin and I. Um, again, in the morning, just finding great little shots. Is this half half moon? I can't remember what mountain this is. Does anybody know Yosemite? Oh. Is that the dome one? I don't know. Gorgeous. Half dome, I think. Yeah, well, it, this was in the field. And uh, I, I like the, the sign where it says meltdown. That, that was Kevin having a meltdown. Uh, <laughs> but what was funny is everywhere we see people, uh, Kevin, would, he has this habit of, of wanting to uh, offer to take pictures of, of couples. And, oh, this is not Kevin. This is a dog. Uh, this was a morning shoot, absolutely gorgeous, that I found all by myself because Kevin went walking off the hell and gone because he thought he knew where, the, where he was going, and, and he didn't. Uh, uh, Bill gave us uh, directions that, that Kevin, of course, got lost. But Oh, and then we got to hook up with Charlie Kramer. This is fun. I don't know what the two of them were talking about because I was busy photographing, but whatever it was, it, it was very interesting. I love Charlie. He's a great guy. Uh, Charlie's the best, man. What a great photographer. If nobody's taking a look at his website, look up Charlie Kramer and uh, you know take a look. Oh, there I am shooting a oh, tourist again. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I've got one thing to show you, Kevin. I bet you didn't remember this. What is it? So one of the oh, things. Oh, that's that Iceland. Kevin, <laughs> yes. Yeah, tell him the story and behind it. People would come up and he would take the camera. Which totally kind of freaked them out. They were from Finland or something, that, and English was not their first language, and they thought he was stealing their camera. Yeah, I, I've done that quite a bit. Sometimes I would even get over the hill. Yeah. I, I mean, I have that trusting look to me, don't I? And people would just say, Here, here's my camera, take my picture, and I'd run off with it. Well, then back to uh, the giant sequoias. Um, I actually think uh, photographing people is kind of like combat photography. Um, oh, I actually got him focusing on me. And then, of course, he has to chimp, and then he gives me a finger for giving him a finger. I don't know why you brought walking sticks, but. Yeah. And then, of course, Kevin, what, he finally let me drive so he could sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, as I was photographing that, I almost ran off the fucking road 
and woke him up. So sorry about that, Kevin. Yeah, that's why you didn't drive much more after that. Uh, Bill Neal, we were out there at Tunnel View. He was out there with uh, uh, one of his instructees. And then Kevin brought out the big camera, his 8x10 camera, to photograph. And then he's checking his uh, website again. Oh, this was a great thing. Uh, we got to write about Chongo. Chongo was a free climber, old guy. But I mean, this was in the 70s and the 80s uh, when they were doing uh, free climbing, illegal climbing of Half Dome and the other mountains. But he's an old guy. He kind of squats in Yosemite. They tried to get rid of him, but uh, he keeps coming back. And so we talked about him. He's, he's, he's written a lot of books that he's self-published. And one of the books he self-published apparently by um, getting into the office at Yosemite, the business office at Yosemite, and using their Xerox machine uh, to publish books. Uh, but I like every Republican has a deeper idiot inside yearning to be free. Um, sorry, no politics. Uh, <laughs> well, this guy um, was this guy was really quite something. He was featured in the New York Times and all sorts of stories about this guy. He even invented a rubber sole for shoes for climbers so they would have better grip going up the mountains. And he was just sitting over there by himself. And I, I, I kept saying to Jeff, I got to go talk to this guy. And I just went up and over talked to him. And the guy, he, he was a kind of kooky, but fascinating individual. And we had a blast talking to this guy. Um, well, then we're finally leaving Yosemite. And uh, uh, we stopped. The, he wanted to stop to smell the... These weren't roses, but you get the drift. Uh, and then we're at the airport, and um, uh, Deborah, he pro uh, he made me promise that I wouldn't show this to you, uh, <laughs> but uh, he did eat McDonald's. I, no, no picture. I, I I don't know everything, but I know everything. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's it. <laughs> Well then. Oh my God! Uh, well, that was good, Jeff. Thank you, um, hey, Jeff. Jeff, the yes. rule is what happens on a workshop stays on the workshop. Yeah, and is documented and then written about after the workshop. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no, no, Jeff. no. Don't forget, I, I had a camera and I was taking pictures and videos too. So uh, um, I'll tell my side of the story sometime. Jeff, thank you, man. Anything else you want to say? No, uh, we are, Kevin and I are contemplating things uh, to do in, during this pandemic that would be kind of uh, more, you know, uh, not travel involved, uh, coming up with maybe online classes and photo assignments and, and uh, uh, um, editing tuition uh, uh, tutorials, one-on-one. Um, uh, -on -one. So, uh, Stay tuned uh, when Kevin and I figure out what the fuck we're doing. We also uh, have an epic video coming. You didn't say anything about Steve Wilkes. Oh, well, yeah. Um, uh, for one reason or another, Kevin and I know an awful lot of photographers because actually photographers are some of my best friends and photographers are often some of the nicest people. Uh, not always. Sometimes they're assholes. But a really nice guy, very talented uh, fellow by the name of Stephen Wilkes, the guy that um, uh, is doing the day to night uh, photographs as well as uh, he did the Jay Myself movie, um, uh, which Kevin has written about. Uh, uh, we did an uh, epic three hour plus interview with Kevin, with uh, Kevin and Stephen talking about his work and uh, Michael, I think, is hard at work trying to make us sound as intelligent as possible. Um, and uh, uh, that's always the editor's job, is to uh, fix it in post. Right, Michael? That's true. I think it's closer to four hours, actually. Really? <laughs> well, look, in a pandemic, when there's nothing but reruns on, it'll give you a lot of good new content to watch. And it yeah. really is engrossing. We'll have more to say about this um, when it comes up, but this is probably one of the more prolific and uh, interesting living photographers we've got uh, today. And uh, it, he's 
he, his transformation and his progression uh, in his photographic career that he shares with us is absolutely fascinating. So I, I hope yeah, one of the things that we highlight is the America in Detail show that he did for Epson in 2000 and 2001. Um, it was really quite impressive at the time. Epson hired him to go around America during um, the uh, 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 centennial, and he spent 53 days on the road photographing on America, getting paid for it. Uh, talk about a dream job with a lot of pressure. But then they did, Epson did, uh, Matt Colbert did the print show, and it was the first time that I saw large uh, 30 by 40 and bigger uh, digital uh, prints uh, from an inkjet that looked truly photographic. And that was 20 years ago. So uh, we, we talked about that at length and we have some uh, special guests that showed up during the interview. That's all I give too much away. So uh, stay tuned for that. Hopefully that'll come up sometime soon. And there's a whole lot of other ones like that in the works. Poor Michael burns the midnight oil because he's handling. <laughs> and we get some other people that are coming up for interviews as well. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, Jeff, let's move on if you don't mind. Anything else um, before I move on to Michael? That's it. Thank you for embarrassing the shit out of me. I um, appreciate it very much. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's, why you're, you're my friend. It's my job. Yeah, you do a good, good and part And I take of it very it. seriously. Yes, you do. You know, always have. Hey, Michael, uh, Michael Durr is our video guy. Um, Hello. <laughs> as Chris was slowing down his video career, and uh, I, I needed to find somebody that could work with both of us and uh, pick up some of the uh, things that we were doing, I went to Robert's Imaging one day and was asking around and uh, dropped a, a hint that I needed somebody. And I guess Michael was in there the week before saying, I'm moving here from Chicago. Do you know anybody that wants to hire me or something? Anyway, somehow or other, we connected, and uh, Michael is um, a, a fine videographer. I mean, I've worked with Chris and seen a lot, but what Michael does, it, you know, he, he's always besting himself. And Michael, I'll kind of let you uh, go from here, tell a little bit about what we're doing, what you're doing, and uh, sure. so forth. Yeah, thanks. I, uh, you kind of hit, hit it pretty good there. We, we met, like, it was very serendipitous on how it all came, came about, I think. <laughs> Yeah. And ironically, we met through the camera store, the local camera store. Um, before I moved to Chicago, there was a, a, a gallery night that the camera shop was hosting that I submitted for. And this was before I moved to Indianapolis. I was living in Chicago prior to that. And uh, I ended up getting an image into the contest. And I went to the gallery night before I actually moved here. So I came down for that, that event. And I met uh, Meredith, who runs uh, or is a part owner of Robert's Camera here in Indianapolis, and ended up chatting with her on the side and said, "Hey, I'm you know I'm a videographer and a photographer. I'm going to be moving to town. You know, just kind of trying to network and whatnot." And said, "I, I was, was going to be moving here, and if you know of any you know positions or jobs, you know, like give me a shout out or whatever." And I always assumed she'd probably forget my name the second I turned around and left. <laughs> but uh, lo and behold, like a week later, I got a phone call and it was uh, from her. And she said, I gave your name to this guy named Kevin Rayburn. And uh, next thing I know is a few days after that, uh, he gave me a call. I remember it very vividly because I was actually riding my bike uh, along the lakefront trail in Chicago. And I didn't want to miss the call and uh, I had my phone up really loud. So I, I heard it ringing and I stopped, I pulled my bike off and I had my first conversation with Kevin uh, while sitting out looking at the sun rising over Lake Michigan. <laughs> wow. So it was really uh, history ever since when I moved to town shortly thereafter, I started my first project uh, working with Kevin just here in the studio. Um, I knew I, I'd heard all about Chris and saw all his awesome work. So it was of big shoes to fill, um, but I know that Kevin was looking to do more content locally, and uh, being that Chris was uh, up in Canada and whatnot, it wasn't always so easy to do. <laughs> so it was uh, an honor to uh, to kind of help, uh, you know, continue the content and whatnot. And obviously, as you heard shortly after that, everything changed, and because uh, we were working on content for another website. <laughs> and uh, after that, I was a big part of the. I was actually at the dinner where you saw the photo PXLs jotted on the menu there. Yes. And uh, I knew at that moment that uh, 
things things had changed for the better <laughs> and uh, it's been uh, a roller coaster of a ride uh, that's to say the least uh, in these few years done a lot of content I've traveled with Kevin to the Palouse I didn't even know where the Palouse was <laughs> prior to this uh, and now I tell just about everyone I know about it and tell them that they need to at least drive through there once in their life uh, and recently uh, took a trip to Antarctica who would have thought? <laughs> um, I, I certainly, I was doing the agency thing in Chicago, uh, working in marketing at marketing stations and, or marketing firms and whatnot. And uh, so I had always been doing photography and video, but always doing it, you know, for some sort of product um, or, or thing, you know, the advertising, I guess. Um, so for me to do video content on photography is kind of like a dream job. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm uh, out here now and uh, helping Kevin, you know, come up with ideas, create content, uh, do all sorts of things. Uh, we've done some travel videos, one being uh, to the Palouse and one to Antarctica. We've done stuff here locally. We've done gear reviews. Uh, I've done some stuff on my own kind of with different cameras. I'll talk about video capabilities and things like that. And uh, we always try to keep the photographer in mind. So it's more about why would a photographer want this camera um, and as opposed to just talking about the video portion of it. So that's kind of a, I don't know, a relatively short synopsis <laughs> of, uh, of, of the stuff, my role, I guess. And uh, I hope it continues to grow and it's great to be a part of the team and everything. And I, uh, I threw in the chat there, uh, the YouTube channel that we have, it's youtube.com slash photo PXL. Encourage everyone to just hit the subscribe button on there. And if you click the little uh, bell icon, you'll get a notification that we posted a new video. We obviously like being in the pandemic right now, it's been, we've slowed up on some of our travel things, obviously, but we've picked up, um, on a lot of, uh, other kind of creative implementations. <laughs> so we've done, uh, some, uh, Kevin's been doing a lot of zoom interviews with photographers. He just mentioned the Steve Wilkes one. Uh, I've canceled all of my streaming services cause I don't need them anymore. I can just watch, uh, watch Kevin's uh, <laughs> videos and, uh, edit, and edit those all night. So, uh, I binge watch, uh, Kevin talking and, and, and sure. stuff. So that's really fun. <laughs> but the uh, the stuff that we've been done have been doing has been really fun. Uh, we also do an on the rocks show relatively uh, regularly, um, and that is in partnership with uh, the guys at Roberts Camera here in town. And uh, we kind of talk about all things photography. It's Kevin and then a couple of guys that work at uh, that work at Roberts that have been in the camera business and in the industry for for many years. So cool. Uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Uh, I'm at Instadur on Instagram. I'll throw that into uh, the web chat there as well. Um, oh, and to, to all of you that are listening, <clears throat> if you've got any ideas for videos you might want to see, let us know. Yeah, that's a great, great point. If, if there's something that you guys like to see or that maybe something that we haven't been doing that you would like to see done, maybe something that we're doing that you don't want to see any more of, <laughs> like me on camera, uh, we could go and I can... Uh, you know, certainly, certain, certainly look into that as well. So just we're let not, us know uh, what you're interested in. We're, we're not trying to be like a lot of the other YouTube channels. If any of you noticed just, uh, just the other day, uh, Sony released the A7S Canon a few weeks before that did their thing. And exactly nine o'clock when embargo lists, there's 35, 40 YouTubers all putting uh, that information up there. And that's just not a place where we wanted to be. Um, we're going to explore different ways of looking at cameras and uh, we got some of those coming up really soon. Um, so we're going to try to keep those a little quicker and faster and more to the point. Uh, and we won't ever be the first out the gate with a video because I just don't want to get in that mad rush. I don't need to do that. I'm too old for that kind of stress. Um, and, you know, we're looking at, uh, you know, tutorials too in regards to uh, Capture One, um, uh, things on Lightroom and other third-party software platforms and so forth. So uh, we'll probably be reaching out for feedback there. But if any of you have ideas or are interested in any uh, particular software or things that could be a good tutorial for you, let us know. Um, we do plan once the pandemic uh, lifts to get a very interesting group of people together and focus on uh, printing. And uh, as you might have seen on the site I wrote uh, about the workshops that we're doing, uh, we do plan to do some fine art printing workshops um, 
at our studio gallery once we can get people safely back into uh, the same room. And uh, we're really looking forward to that one. We have four printers in the studio. Um, we got a lot of people that are volunteering, uh, major companies that are volunteering to sponsor us. And um, it'll cover everything in regards to fine art printing, also using uh, the, the rip from uh, color bite image print that we uh, use quite a bit and uh, a number of other things. So it should be a lot of fun when that happens. And, uh, you know, we're just kind of biding our time and trying to get through um, where we are. Um, so Michael, thank you very much for all the work you've done. Um, we've had a few good memories so far. One of the, the great memories I have from an Antarctica trip, um, kind of late at night, 10, 30, 11, I guess, and everybody had gone to bed. We were just finishing a nightcap and I told Michael that every night before I go to bed I walk around the ship and I said why don't you tell me you know come on out and we stepped out and we we're kind of leaning over the railing we're the only ones out there and dark and we hear you know this this noise like this blowing noise and I said that's a humpback I could tell it's a humpback and he, the whale was coming towards us and we were going towards the whale and literally Michael and I were the only guys out there and within 10 feet of this ship this giant whale goes by and enough light that we could see it and it was just like us oh, so so cool it was it was a ridiculous moment <laughs> you oh. spent all day kind of searching for those things and then you go out at night there's nobody there and it's like right next to you <laughs> <laughs> a lot of good fun there so um you know michael thanks for all the work you've done you're um you know you're you're quite the i consider you a really good friend too and you know you're part of the team and, and i really say this is part of a family um we feel that way and michael's uh, the father of two cute little boys and a a great wife who lets him come with me and do these crazy things. And I always worry about someday I'm going to see her and she's going to smack me over the head or something. But uh, I think uh, allowing me to go uh, for a 12 day trip to Antarctica while we had an uh, infant son was, was probably the worst it could possibly get for her. Yeah, well, <laughs> we, we tried to make that up to you um, after that when we got back. All right. Well, we're going to keep moving on. Mark um, Siegel. Mark has been part of a, uh, PXL from the very beginning. He's um, a, a very technically astute individual. Um, I love my chats with Mark. I, I sometimes get a headache after listening to him because he could, is so knowledgeable about things. He just completely um, passes my level of, of where we're going. But when it comes to profiling, printers, ink, and papers, and uh, all that, there's nobody better to learn that stuff from than Mark. And so, Mark, yeah, we want you to share a little bit about what you've been doing. Yeah, thanks. Um, actually, I, I'm just going to um, preface it with uh, you, you mentioned a situation that I'm into now. Um, if anybody, particularly audience members, um, uh, haven't noticed, I haven't been writing very much lately. So far, I've contributed about um, 11 articles to Photo PXL over the past year. Um, but the last one was a bit of a time ago, and the schedule of these articles, or I should say there's no schedule really, but the pace of them got slowed down. Uh, firstly, because I had an attack of x -ritis. I will explain what that is in a moment. And most recently, I've had an attack of not being able to print um, because of a problem with the um, Mac operating system. So uh, both of these problems, I hope, are going to be resolved in the near future. And then I'll be able to get back into a few projects that are currently underway, and I'll just briefly describe them. Um, the x rightist problem is that after my i1 Pro 2 had its fourth birthday, I started noticing that the results weren't quite up to uh, what I normally expected. And um, so I got in touch with x Write about that. And they suggested that really after four years, it should be recertified. And so uh, I made the mistake of sending this instrument to uh, x Write for recertification. And the way they do that, I suspect they send them back over to China in Shuhai where they're manufactured and uh, they have them recertified in China and re-imported. So you never get back the instrument you had. Um, they, it takes too long with that process. So they, uh, they send you um, another recertified instrument from their stock in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, so far over the past uh, six weeks or so, or two months, I've been through three uh, of these recertified i1 Pro 2s 
systematically, they all failed my uh, quality control tests. And um, the second one even had electrical connectivity problems. So I'm about to send x ray a uh, lengthy letter uh, accompanied by 11 exhibits to tell them that we need another kind of solution altogether. I'm not accepting any more recertified I1 Pro 2 instruments from them. So that problem has to be resolved before I can continue my normal workflow, and I expect within the next couple of weeks it probably will. If anybody else has had experience with recertified I1 Pro 2s uh, who's listening here, I would be very interested in hearing your experience. Um, the printing issue is um, that periodically, I think it's happened to me, this is the third time now, um, when I send an image to print, I get a message uh, before the, 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 the file actually gets into the uh, printer spool, I get a message, an error message in the, um, in the driver progress thing saying stopped, filter failed. So uh, this is one of these obscure things that from the message you wouldn't have a clue what this means. So I immediately went onto the internet, of course, and started Googling and I found that uh, this is a very well-known problem that has existed since at least 2012 that hasn't been resolved. Apparently it has something to do with the common Unix printing system called CUPS, which both uh, Apple and Linux use. Uh, it affects all printer brands. It could strike at any time um, before you make a print, while you're making a print, and uh, nobody can explain exactly what causes it. But I've been told, or at least the instructions I got, were to reset the printing system, if necessary, dump the driver and reinstall the driver, and then it should work. Two times out of three, that advice was correct. Uh, yesterday, it just didn't work. I did it twice over, and I still can't print. I phoned Apple, I had three hours on the telephone with them that was an exercise in total frustration. None of them were technically capable of helping me. And in fact, one of them uh, almost caused me a heart attack. I won't go into the details, but um, anyhow, um, still not solved. So I have to solve the printing problem. Anyhow, once, and if anybody, by the way, in the audience or on the panel, has experience with filter failed and uh, can tell me how they solved it, I would be so appreciative. Um, now, getting into the projects that um, I have uh, in the pipeline, literally, um, on the table, um, several things. Firstly, as many of you will know, uh, there was a big train smash with uh, inkjet papers, um, which actually started a year ago, March, um, but it finally hit the market uh, sometime around November when suppliers' inventories ran out. And that problem was with a certain group of Baraita-based uh, luster papers. It was Ilford Gold Fiber Silk, Red River San Gabriel um, something or other, Smooth 2, um, Epson Baraita, Legacy Baraita, um, and there was one other, which one, Canson Baraita Photographique. So all of these papers are part of a family that are coated in the same mill in Europe. And uh, that mill ran into um, a problem or two. Um, one of the problems that I heard was that uh, a chemical that was used in the coating became unavailable or unusable, which destroyed the recipe. The other aspect of it that I heard was that this particular coating facility changed the machinery and were never able to get quite back to the same recipe as they had previously. I don't know which of those stories are correct, or it could be that both of them are. Anyhow, all those papers ran out. Thousands of people, many thousands of people, print religiously with those papers because they were all so gorgeous. Very similar papers, just minor differences in the exact recipe that each paper vendor brought to that particular coating mill to do. Um, they were not identical papers, but they're in that same family from the same place. So since then, a number of replacements uh, have been put onto the market, and uh, I'm in the process of testing two of them. One of them is the Katzenbereiter Photographic 2, 
um, which is really not quite the same as Beraita Photographique 1. I won't go into the details of that now, but suffice to say it's somewhat different. And uh, the second one is a new Red River offering that uh, Red River has recently put on the market. It's Apollo Duro Beraita something or other. Anyhow, um, I was in the process of profiling these papers and looking at the uh, vendors' profiles compared to my profiles and looking at what kind of prints they produce and so on, when all of this trouble I mentioned earlier hit. So I haven't been able to finish those reviews. Um, then um, what happened also is that Legion paper had to discontinue for a while Moab, Juniper, Beraita, RAG 305. I, I can see people around tables that sit for long hours of the day figuring out what kinds of sexy names they can put on paper to get the marketing. But for people like me who deal with a lot of them and have to review this stuff, keeping all these long uh, elaborate names in my head at one time is quite a challenge. Anyhow, I think I got the name right. Um, so that paper ran into supply chain issues. It was discontinued for a while and now it's back. Um, and I had reviewed this paper back in the Lula days. I think it was 2014 or 2015. Back then, um, I wasn't using quite the same techniques for reviewing them that I'm using them now. So that review was a bit superficial. And I'm told by Moab uh, Legion that it's ex exactly the same paper. But uh, since it's newly reintroduced and since I have better ways of going after these things now, I decided that I would re-review um, uh, Juniper uh, Beraita. Um, I started out on that, uh, as I say, while these problems were hitting me. does look like a very nice paper, by the way, and, and would be a good candidate for replacing some of the discontinued ones. So on the paper side, I have these three in the hopper right now. Turning to printers, um, of course, the big news lately uh, for the 17-inch uh, desktop world has been Epson's announcement uh, and partial release of the uh, Surecolor P700 and Surecolor P900 uh, printers. As Kevin mentioned, the P700 is on the market now. It's been released. Kevin has one and he's testing it. And the arrangement that we cut with Epson is that since Kevin wanted a P700, he got that one. And since I wanted to review a P900, um, uh, that one is going to be coming to me, but we don't have a date yet. Um, so when that printer is ready uh, to ship to reviewers, uh, and by the way, reviewers are not necessarily the first people who get these machines. They have a queue of commercial users who are very interested in them and they try to service that queue as a matter of priority. It's commercially important for them. So uh, as a reviewer, I'm sort of in line for when they can uh, trot out the first um, units that are going to be available for reviewers. So I'm just waiting for that. And uh, then I'm going to test it. But Kevin and I are working cooperatively uh, on this project. Um, we'll be sharing views, his views on the 700, my views on the 900. And sooner or later on Photo PXL, we'll have what I hope will be two of the most comprehensive reviews on the, mar on the reviewing market uh, of these two machines. Um, there's other stuff I'm working on as well. I don't only do papers and printers. I also do scanners, and I should put it more broadly uh, these days as digitizing film. Um, because, of course, um, it's becoming more and more feasible and more popular given the dearth of good scanners on the market uh, to use your camera for uh, digitizing the film instead of using the scanner. And uh, I have done a fair amount of this before. Um, and I think I've written something about it that was on Lula. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly. But I am in the process of working on a um, uh, of working on a comprehensive article um, on the subject of using a camera to digitize film. Along with that, uh, there's been one great development um, in this area, and that's. Um, um, the uh, production of a new piece of software uh, for um, interpreting uh, scanned film, uh, Negative Lab Pro and Negative Lab Pro 2. Uh, I did buy um, a license to Negative Lab Pro 2. 
Um, I'm, um, I, I have tested it um, uh, superficially. I haven't really gone into it in great detail, but from what I've looked at, uh, it's actually a very nice piece of software. And uh, so, uh, whereas up to now, I have uh, only considered Silverfast with its Negafix module as being the best way of um, converting negatives into positives, into good positives, Negative Lab Pro um, is a competitive candidate, a very different approach from anything you do with Silverfast, but um, it'll be interesting one of these days to put an article together comparing the Silverfast approach with the negative lab two approach. These are just different workflows for um, doing this job. And I'm not wedded to any particular workflow, I have to say. I'm, I'm, uh, I do whatever works well and whatever I think is practical. And by the way, that goes for computer operating systems also. I see a note in the chat about uh, the uh, PC versus Mac thing uh, being a settled dispute back in the 20th century. I never looked upon this as a dispute. I think both operating systems uh, are fine. They both do different things differently and um, you use whatever works best for you. It's To me, it's not an ideological issue. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, we'll get it. We can talk about that later. I, you know, it's partly a joke. It's it was just out of frustration. Maybe I should go back to Windows. But quite frankly, if I don't get this fucking problem solved soon, uh, there will be a laptop solution with a Windows operating system in it for operating that printer. Right. Um, cool. So anyhow, those now, there's one other little, if I have a moment, I'm also very interested in photography books. Um, many people don't know this about me, uh, but I have a uh, fairly extensive library of photo books. I, I can't really uh, show it all successfully because this camera is tethered, uh, but that's just about one eighth of it, I guess. Um, I have a lot of photography books. Uh, I enjoy collecting them. I have a lot of historical material. Um, so I, I have been thinking about getting into um, a little project of doing book reviews of some of the better ones that um, I come across, and I have some rather unique ones, both new publications and stuff that's been out of print for a very long time, but are really uh, of great historical interest. Um, and I've also started to get into uh, making my own. Um, as a result of the um, um, Black Lives Matter um, issues that have uh, freshly arisen, um, a group of mural artists, I do a lot of photography of mural art, by the way, uh, sometimes called graffiti, but this isn't quite graffiti. This goes beyond graffiti. It's actually mural art. And I do a lot of photography of mural art, which is a nice specialized little niche that has its own ins and outs. Anyhow, I've done a lot of it because Toronto happens to be a relatively unknown but very rich environment for um, mural artwork. And uh, I've taken to photographing a fair bit of it. I've gotten to know some of the artists. I know the program people in Toronto uh, who facilitate uh, the production of these artworks. And um, the Black Lives Matter thing um, encouraged um, a group of um, 41 artists um, in Toronto and from Montreal to um, undertake a project called Paint the City Black. And uh, one of the artists told me that this was going on. It uh, was uh, the, the area being painted um, was a, a very well known uh, alleyway in downtown Toronto called Graffiti Alley for those who know it. The thing about Graffiti Alley is that the works turn over very quickly. You have to catch it uh, sort of freshly when it's been painted because you never know when it's all going to disappear. And this is the case for a tremendous amount of mural art. And that's one of the real attractions of photographing it is that you make a bunch of photographs and uh, before you know it, your photographs <laughs> might be of historic value because the works that you photographed they can be very fine, lovely, well done works, but they disappear. People paint them over, they tag them, the weather affects them, all kinds of stuff like that. Anyhow, so I did Black Lives Matter and um, I produced a, uh, in Lightroom, I produced a, uh, a, a book 
um, called Black Lives Matter. And uh, the subject matter of this book is uh, this set of, uh, of works that uh, were painted in um, Graffiti Alley in downtown Toronto. Very and cool, Mark. Stuff, Very cool. This stuff really is going to disappear because a lot of it is printed on, um, on construction boards, which are going to be taken down and some of the walls will get painted over and so on. So this is at the stage now where I have to get uh, releases from all of the artists to actually publish the stuff because uh, by copyright law internationally, they have rights on their works. Even and in a public I, place? Um, well, there's a whole story about that. And there's no time. All right, well, we don't have time for that now. So no, but <laughs> wrap it up here. But, but the, the fact is, that they have rights, I know this. And um, so I need to get, uh, I want to cover myself and um, um, I uh, have to get their permissions. And then the next stage after that would be to put together some kind of marketing plan uh, to get this thing uh, out there. Um, it's kind of expensive to produce these things using a service like Blurb. I must say though, that Blurb did an absolutely wonderful job of it. The, the prints are very close to what I produced out of my Epson P5000. So, I mean, the gamut volume is the same, of course, because it's an HP Indigo process, but it's pretty damn good. So, um, um, how to get that done um, economically so you can serve a market with it is going to be the next step. Cool. Well, Mark, um, we got we to gotta keep moving on here, man. Yeah, so that's my story. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm done. <laughs> so you can, we, maybe you can do an article about how to publish the book and when it's all done and all that. That'd be kind of sure. great to do. We yeah. have a few more. Sorry, we're running a little late here, but uh, these are the way it goes as we're trying to figure out how to do these things. We'll set time limits. And um, I, I know now what it takes when I think I can do things in an hour. It's going to take two. No, I knew this wasn't going to be an hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, uh, we still have uh, uh, three more people we want to go to talk about. I got Alon and who's going to be next. Uh, Deborah's got a, a few things to share and what she does with the um, uh, photo PXL site here, not to mention keeping me in line. And then uh, last, we have Jack uh, Shepler from AOK, our website design company. So Alon, why don't you just give us a, a few minutes and what you're doing and what we're doing together and so forth. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. So I'll start with the articles. I've been uh, publishing on Luminous Landscape for a very long time. And when it uh, came to an end, so to speak, I decided to go to PhotoPixel with uh, Kevin, and that's what I've been publishing uh, over the last year. And you can find my essay, if I can share my screen, um, on PhotoPixel. I don't, can you see my screen here? No. Okay. Yes, so, you got you to share screen, and you'll get a dialog box that shows you what share. screen you want to share, and then you click on the picture and go share. It says share screen. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, Safari Arknoll. Pick the window you want to share, and then yeah. find the right corner. Safari unknown. We yeah. don't know if that's it. I don't know. Try it. See what we get. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't really want. Desktop. I'm not sure how to do it. So that's okay. Um, but go on on photopixel.com uh, and you'll see my essays. And what I do is basically write about issues that a lot of people don't write about. I decided a long time ago that I would not publish uh, articles that are reviews of equipment or gear or software. And the reason for that is not because I don't think it's important. It's because there is people that can do it much better than I can. And I figured that out very quickly when I started working with Michael Reichman in uh, around 1999, 2000. He could get the software, he could get the equipment faster than I could and uh, there was no point trying to compete. And I also realized that I did not really care much for writing uh, product reviews and uh, gear and software and all of that. I was much more interested in the personal aspect of photography and the research, you know. So I started writing about that and, and it evolved over the years from being a tutorial based to being actually more reflections about um, what I do, you know, the life of an artist basically and focusing on the artistic aspect of photography, which is what we teach. You know, when we teach workshops, we teach two things, the technical aspects and the artistic aspects. And the whole idea in our view is that this is an art form and technique is at the art 
that is at the service of the art and not the other way around. And for a lot of uh, students that we have, uh, this is really a challenge because most of our students come from a technical background. A lot of them have been engineers or had some profession that was very technical based, doctors, lawyers, um, all of that. And they have very little problems with the technical, you know, they are really good technically, but they don't know really how to approach art, you know, and some of them are very, you know, you know, nervous, so to speak, about how to create art, you know, it's a mystery, you know. And so we start by telling them that art is about the artist, it's not about the gear. And I try to embody that in my workshop by not focusing on the gear too much. Very often I'll say that I've bought enough gear to satisfy me for the rest of my life. And now I'm more interested in my skills, in working on my skills than in acquiring newer gear, you know. And bringing this to the article, the current essay that I have on PhotoPixel is called, you know, um, the Backyard Project, which is the project that I've been working on during the pandemic, which is basically photographing my backyard. Why? Because I can't go to the famous world-class locations that we used to go to, you know, Monument Valley, Antelope Canyon, you know, the Colorado Plateau, all of that. And so, I decided to go and photograph my backyard because it's right there. I don't have to travel. I don't have to socialize, <laughs> you know. And not only that, but I decided to photograph it with an iPad. And uh, for people that think or believe that uh, everything should be photographed with the highest megapixel camera we have, just in case we want to print it to all size, well, that's probably a disappointment because I did not even use an iPhone. Uh, I used an iPad. Yeah, and here's my screen. Somehow, um, Kevin found a way to put it up, and this is my. Uh, no, I get it. <laughs> oh, it was Jeff. Thank yeah. you. Well, thank you. <laughs> oh, it. Um, and this essay is really about um, you know what I'm doing right now during the pandemic. It's about uh, what I do besides photography, because one of the things that I'm very interested in in regards to writing is the fact that we all have a life which is more complex than what. I think comes across if you have a superficial view of our activities on the web. You know, I have hobbies, you know, it might come as a surprise, but no, I don't do only photography. I do other things and that's what I talk about. And I'm working now on the following essay to this, which is called Commitments. And that essay talks about my commitment to photography because one of the things that I found out during uh, the pandemic, you know, and as an outcome of the pandemic, is that it's a very challenging time for photographers, for artists in general, just like when 9-11 happened, it was very challenging, or whenever the recession happened in 2007, it was very challenging. And a lot of people are quitting, you know, and some of them are quitting because they don't have any other option, you know, the funds run low and they have to get jobs. But also some of them are quitting because they never were that committed about it. And that's a good jumping off point, you know. If you started this, uh, you were really having a deep uh, fundamental reason to do it. And you think about quitting, that's probably not a bad time to do it, you know. And so we are seeing uh, that with our students. Of course, we're seeing it in the industry, but we're also seeing it with our students where some of them call us and email us and say, wow, you know, I'm really missing you guys. You know, I want to take a workshop. When are you going to offer the next one? What are you doing? And others, they just basically fade away. We don't hear from them. And I had a student that told me, I'm going to stop my studies now. And I said, well, you know, quitting is a problem because starting again is harder than just struggling on, you know, moving on. And he said, well, don't get me wrong. I'm not quitting. I'm getting off the bus. Well, yeah, the problem <laughs> is the bus has moved on and, I'm, and he has not been on it back. So, you know, I, I, uh, I'm aware of that, you know, and I think in regards to teaching, we know that it's a whole lot harder to get started than it is to just plow on and move on through, uh, you know, those challenging times. So one of the techniques, because your, your question might be, how do you do that? Well, one of the techniques is exactly what I do. I don't confuse intensity with activity. One of the things that does a lot of people in is that they start, you know, a website, they start an Instagram page, they start a YouTube channel, they start a Facebook page, they start a blog. And this is a very intense activity where you have to provide new content every other day or so, if not every day. And when things get hard and they get a little discouraged, that fades away. 
So instead of doing this intense activity, which I know I can't sustain, you know, I've been doing this since 1997 and there's no way I could have sustained that level of intensity. I have a very paced activity, you know, on Kevin's site, I publish one article a month. That's my rhythm. And that's my publishing schedule. You know, I write one full article a month. That doesn't mean that I don't write more than that. I write every single day. But it does take time to put together a well-crafted and well-constructed essay. Um, and uh, that's my rhythm. It's a very slow rhythm. It's 12 essays a year. Some people write a blog every day. But the, the advantage to me is I don't have to deal with the problem of uh, intensity. If I get tired, if something happens that slows me down, I'm still able to easily publish one essay a month. So Jeff, I, I guess I got to cut down all the websites and, and pages I have, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, you have too yeah. many cameras, too many websites. Um, you have too much fun. Too many yeah, cats. Well, I mean, what I'm saying is not a criticism of other people. You know, everybody is different. I'm not here to criticize anyone. I'm just describing what I do. And no, I, I, you know, you, you, why didn't you like tell me this six months ago? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I've made the decision some time ago, maybe a year or two ago, to start writing essays in the I format. That is, I write, you know, this is what I do. And what's very interesting is when I write, I very often use the we format, you know, that is, that is what photographers do. We do this, we do that. When I rewriting, because every writing is rewriting, everything that I write is rewrote, written several times, and then Natalie checks it before it goes to anyone. When I rewrite, I transfer the we into I. Okay, and I take out the people and I put me, you know. And, and the decision for that was very simple. I don't want people to email me or call me and say, hey, listen, I don't do that. If they do, I tell them, I say, well, I never said you do. I'm just talking with me. You know? So I'm not interested um, in, in really, a lot of my essays are not really self-help essays. They are descriptions of my life. And if people find common characteristics between what I do and what they do or what I do and what they want to do, Fantastic. If they don't, not a problem. So it's the approach of art. You know, the, the kind of photography that I do, which is non-commercial photography, which is artistic photography, is very simple. I decide to create whatever photo I decide to do, whatever I like, and people who like it buy it, and people who don't like it, they just move on. <laughs> you know, and so I follow the same approach with writing. Well, you know, I I appreciate all that you've done for us and. Um, you know, as readers, if you want, you can always do a search uh, or look at the tags and um, search on a tag for uh, the articles uh, under his name. Um, so uh, you just type in Alon's name and you get those articles up. That's one of the features of the website is the categories and the tags. So you can do broad searches and also, yeah. you know, narrow it down and so forth. And you know, it's a good way if you uh, don't remember what was said in the previous article. You don't have to go searching through the articles. You just put a search in and, and find that article. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, my essays sort of follow each other, you know, and uh, uh, they, are, they are a series of essays called uh, Photography as Art, you know, and each essay uh, sort of follows the one before. And sometimes I have part one, part two, and sometimes, um, you know, I start a new essay from scratch, you know. But I'm always trying to focus on, this, on subjects that I'm not written much about, you know. And uh, yeah. well, as you can see, there's quite a collection uh, by Alan there. And, um, you know, it's one of the beauties of the site, too, is we made it very easy to, you know, when you do one search, you'll not only get all the, the articles, but you'll get his form post and everything else. And yeah. if he was posted on the community, you'd see his pictures there. Yeah, and yeah I wish there was more firm activity because um, it's, it's very minor right now and it's more technical and, than than. Uh, you know, let's say about ideas, you know, which is what I write about, but yep. I'm sure it's going to come up eventually. You know, there was a, you know, I'm sure there's going to be more activity as people. Well, you know. we're going to try to you know, get the form cooking more and it's growing. And, you yeah. know, if the things that make a form work is it needs content. And of course they only get the content is by the people that uh, participate in it and more, right. and the, we're getting a lot more participation. So uh, more content and everything else. And I appreciate any of you guys and any members of our, our readers and audience that, uh, can, can help us out there, that's great. Yeah, so my next essay will be about commitments and I'll talk more about the Backyard Project. What was interesting about the Backyard Project is we have a lot of friends that are non-photographers, you know, friends that we uh, know from other activities. 
that have been very interested in it and said that's the ideal project for this time. You know, mm -hmm. we had friends that are members of the Ferry Club or members of other clubs that we belong to that were really interested in it because they're like, you know, I hadn't thought of that, but why not? I mean, we can't go anywhere, you know. And those friends, actually, some of them went camping in their backyard. Yes, <laughs> they pitched a tent. They the pitched a tent in their backyard and they did a night out and they roasted marshmallows and had <laughs> s'mores and you know, people are trying to just enjoy themselves. So, so that's on the side of the essays. I also want to talk about my workshops because uh, we have some of our students online and I know that's a subject of interest to a lot of them. The problem we had with our workshops is that a lot of them, and this year the majority of them, were on Navajo land. And Navajo land has been shut down, literally, that's the word they use, it's on lockdown, because the Navajos actually are one of the most target groups of the coronavirus. They are, you know, somehow their DNA or whatever it is, they are much more sensible or sensitive to acquiring the virus. And Natalie is friends with the Attorney General of the Navajo Nation. And, you know, it's not like we know people in high places, we don't. It's just that Natalie was teaching with mm -hmm. her. And maybe you can want to talk a little oh, yeah. bit about that. Yeah, her name's Doreen McPaul. We actually taught in Chinle Junior High School together. Uh, she taught math. Uh, got frustrated teaching math um, because she said that fractions scared uh, the seventh and eighth graders to death. So she didn't really get any satisfaction out of that. So she quit and became a lawyer. Uh, and she went to the Sandra Day O'Connor School of Law at ASU. She is now the Attorney General of the Navajo Nation. So I'm in very close contact with her and she lets me know what's going on there. But the Navajos, uh, the ones that are more susceptible are the one, people that have diabetes. Um, a lot of them don't have running water and electricity still. So the hand washing is an issue as well as, and then the elders, some of the elders live so far out in the middle of nowhere that they actually have people transporting food and water to them and checking to make sure that they're okay because they live so mm -hmm. far out. They're really concerned about the elders because if they lose their elders, they're gonna lose all of their stories. They're afraid of losing their language. Um, so they're trying to protect the elders as much as possible. So they do not want tourists at all on the mm -hmm. Navajo reservation at this time. They were on lockdown last weekend. They're starting to arrest Navajos that are not obeying the lockdown and not finding them, but they're starting to throw them in jail. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things going on, and uh, we're just keeping in close contact with them. Uh, many of my students, uh, we Facebook each other. They're in their 30s now. Uh, we Facebook each other every day. You know, so I know a lot of what's going on there, how their families are doing. Some of them have passed away. Um, they have family members that have passed away, but... Um, yeah. yeah, so we're keeping in contact and, uh, you know, they're, they're, they want to open it up again. Um, Doreen uh, is interested in showcasing some of Alan's photographs because she wants to market the tourism back to Navajo mm -hmm. land. She's, she's just as excited about opening it up again as we are coming to mm -hmm. go photograph. Mm -hmm. um, so... Yeah, the Navajos are one of the more at-risk groups because they have all of the things that get people to catch that virus, which is they, they live in large groups, you know, families of 12 people in one house. It can wipe out a whole generation. And it can wipe out an entire household or generation. They have diabetes. They have uh, no running water. They have... Uh, you know, no public transportation, you know, so all of these problems really impact them hard. When you have three generations living together, um, they don't want to take the risk of losing three generations uh, yeah. at one time. So how does that put you in regards to the summit for this November? Exactly. Yeah, so that I was going to get to that. What it means in regards to workshops is that we are totally dependent on their decisions. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, the summit is organized in PAGE this year. And Page is not technically on the reservation, but it's within a mile or even a half mile of the reservation. Antelope Canyon is on the reservation. And you can imagine that if the situation as far as the virus is concerned is bad on the reservation, it's gonna be bad in Page because a half mile means nothing to a virus. So 
it means putting a lot of participants at risk. And uh, a lot of our participants are in the age group that's actually at risk, you know, older people, retired, you know, and we don't want to lock them up in a classroom if the risk is high, obviously. So we haven't made a decision yet, but um, obviously, you know, things are not really looking that positive because of the situation in Navajo land. Just as an aside, the city of Gallup or the town of Gallup, which is in New Mexico, which is the closest town to Chinle, you know, Arizona where we used to live, uh, and still is 100 miles from Chinle, is where every Navajo that lives in Chinle and in the neighborhood area goes to shop, you know, once they get paid. So if they get paid on Friday and on Saturday morning, they're all in Gallup. The, the town of Gallup was shut down, literally, the whole town. You could not get in, you could not get out. And that was for several weekends or even a yes. week, right? Yeah, because yeah. they didn't want the Navajos. Because they did not want the Navajos to go there and be exposed themselves. So it's, it's very, very serious. And, uh, you know, I think that the last thing that uh, these people want to see is a bunch of people that are just happy, go lucky, taking photographs when they are basically facing, you know, deadly issues. Well, I so, think that's the, that's the case wherever we go right now, I think. Right. We have to be very sensitive to their feelings. Well, um, not only their yeah. feelings, but I think you have to be sensitive to the health and wealth of your participants well, yeah. and everybody else. So yeah, I call it's it feeling, not the year for workshops is what it comes yeah. down to. That's, you know? that's the French version of, of putting it, you know, feeling, but obviously we're concerned with their health and so on. Um, and, uh, you know, we have to wait and see what we decide. And we've done that so far. You know, Antelope Canyon, the same. Can you imagine being in a slot canyon, in, you know, close together, there's no way to get six feet apart. And wind in Antelope Canyon only blows in one direction, which is from top to bottom. Well, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better from everything we're hearing. So, you know, I we, agree. Gotta, we just kind of have to write the year off and start looking at next year and trying to figure yeah. out other ways uh, of doing yeah. things. Yeah, there, there's a lot of issues. You know, I follow what's going on in the U.S., but also follow what's going on in France. And what's interesting is a lot of the things that have been happening in France are now happening in the U.S. Uh, one of them is actually mental health. You know, the, uh, the aspect of the pandemic that actually affecting people's mental health. You know, yep. uh, I think we've all seen this movie of this lady that went to Target and tore up the mask stand. You know, the mask selling. Yeah, we saw that. And that person actually admitted that she has mental health issues. You know, she went berserk. You know, France has now a whole team studying mental health uh, issues due to the pandemic. There's only so long people can stay cooped up at home yeah, doing yeah. nothing, watching reruns of uh, soap operas or, you know, the French version of soap operas until they go nuts. You know? So we have to be very sensitive to that, you know, and... Uh, well, you, we keep us posted and we can certainly, you know, yeah. let everybody know here. And, and as I, as Jeff mentioned, and we, I kind of said the same thing, we're, we're looking at a couple ideas and you know, we'll have a yeah. chat with you about that. You know, maybe yeah, we talked different. about it. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to it because to me, that's obviously the next move, you know, uh, online teaching. Yep. And uh, I'm, I'm very open to it, um, you know. So uh, any, any of the readers out there and the viewers, if you have any ideas, um, you know, in regards to how, would you, how you'd like to participate in an event like that, um, we, have, we do have some ideas and we're certainly open to, uh, yeah. others so please you know send us an email and let us know what your thoughts are and we'll certainly keep in mind as we get into some serious planning over the next couple of weeks yeah we talked about doing print reviews online which is very mm -hmm. easy actually you know people can just put yeah. their photographs on the screen and we can talk about it and even edit them live you know me you and jeff you know and the way we do well, at the summit except do a live version of that on one the of the things i should tell our our viewers here too is tonight you're watching a webinar where it's just you can see just us Mm -hmm. You know, there are other ways if we do smaller groups where we can see everybody and everybody can participate. But, you know, when, if you have too many people online, it gets a little out of control. And like I said, <laughs> we're trying to understand how to do this the, the first time around. So, um, you know, we're, we're learning as we go. So, but, you know, we'll see how this goes and we'll refine it and try to, you know, yeah. learn from I think it's been well. I mean, that's my first time on Zoom, you know. I'm, well, you're doing good, Alana. Yeah. You're doing great. Natalie's guest yeah. appearance was, you know, the highlight of the evening. Yeah, <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> Natalie's right here. She, I just Thank have to you. bring her. <laughs> She's um, a bit shy, you know. If it's okay, well, I'd like to move on the dinner back before so. we use up our, our couple hours and everything here. It's been a long time. And uh, once again, I appreciate all the viewers that are still online. And for those that went off, we'll uh, put this up on the site and they can scrub through to the sections yeah. they'd like to watch. Anything and else you'd like to add before we move over to Deborah? Uh, just that if you want to find out what's going on with my workshop, just go on my website, which is beautiful-landscape.com or alanbrio.com. 
the frenchspelling.com and you'll have the latest update, you know. And we're really going at it day by day, you know, because things, every day it seems like there's something new coming up, you know, so. It's well, thank you. Good. Thanks a lot. And thanks, Natalie. You guys well, are great. I've always had a lot of fun with you and I really, really oh, appreciate yeah. uh, your articles for the site and what you've done and what you've contributed. You know, overall the content you know, is, is growing that way. And, um, you know, yeah, you're welcome. You know, I really a lot of readers you. that like what you do. Yeah. I mean, to me, writing and reflecting about photography is as important as taking photographs, you know, so it's to me both sides, you know, and the, the, the pandemic, in a sense, provides a great opportunity to do more of that. Obviously, we have to slow down on the photography, but uh, I'm doing a lot of research. I'm reading a lot of books. I wanted to show this one here, which I kept on the side. Um, you may have to read it backwards because of the oh, screen. Yeah but it's called uh, The Nature of Art and Workmanship by David Pye. And it really talks about woodworking, but there is a direct relationship between hand tools used in woodworking and cameras because a camera is a hand tool. Yeah. And Pye's point in here is that um, there is two kinds of workmanship, the workmanship of risk and the workmanship of certainty. And that's a very misunderstood concept in large part because nobody reads Pye. They read writing about Pye. Um, but I read the original, as you can see here, and this is something that I'll be writing about in the future, you know, talking about the relationship of that approach, this rhetoric of uh, workmanship, uh, of risk and workmanship of certainty in art, you know, which is yep. art should be a risk, not a certainty. And we have so many students that take a workshop and tell us, I want to create my photograph of Antelope Canyon. But eventually at the end of the day, they create the photograph that they've had in mind because they saw either one of mine or one of somebody else for all these years. That's certainty, you know, risk is going yep. out and creating something that you've never seen and facing the backlash, you know, I mean, personally, I don't mind criticism. I've got so much of it that I think I'm criticism proof, you know, but. Well, you, you do good on Instagram and things then, Facebook and stuff. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I do. Yeah. But I have my own rhythm, which is very slow. You know, I'm not yeah. trying to post something every day. You know, I, I, I follow Instagram posts and I'm like, this guy posts us four, five, six times a day. You know, how long until, you know, something breaks in the machinery? You know, if you use something too hard, then. You know. <laughs> That's a computer. You can't use it too hard, except Mark. Yeah. He's the one that breaks his. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for the opportunity, Kevin. Yeah, thank you very much for being part of this tonight. I appreciate it very much. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, we only have a couple more people to go. And really, a lot of people have been waiting for this moment. And like all good TV shows and things, we always save the best parts for last. We still have Jack from AOK to go. But next up is my beautiful wife, Deborah Fadley. Raber. And you know, I, I got to say before I go anywhere, and of course, I'm trying to make some brownie points right now. Um, is that uh, I wouldn't be where I am here if it wasn't for Deborah. Um, a magnificent woman, been through a lot this year. Uh, we all have, but you know, she lost her father due to the COVID and she got very sick by it. But somehow or other, she balances back. She uh, always is on top of things, uh, a perfectionist, and, uh, and she's just been great support for me. We wouldn't be able to create this site without you know, her work and her contributions. She did a lot in regards to the colors and all the different things that we did on the site. Not to mention she's in touch with everybody that is uh, signed up as a member and uh, also handles a lot, if not almost all the administration for the Rock Hopper workshop. So Deborah, what do you have to share for us? Deborah, do you have a cat out in the backyard? One just walked by. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sure we've got a few um, cats that are okay. neighbors, outdoor cats. Okay. And they do walk by once in a while. I, I, would, I just want to make sure one of your cats didn't get out. Right. I know. <laughs> no, ours are all indoor cats, but there are some neighbors cats that do walk along once in a while. <laughs> Thanks for checking though. Um, Basically, uh, I've kind of helped out with contributions, um, and you can do yearly, monthly, single, through PayPal or Stripe. Um, and we try to thank everybody individually, and it really helps us to keep the site going. Um, Rockhopper uh, workshops, I help with intake and kind of enter people in databases so that we can keep track of everybody and communicate with them along the way uh, the different points up to the point where you leave on the workshop also um, 
I wanted to thank everybody for condolences as well as well wishes for me um, during uh, this crazy time. Um, I can't, yeah, I can't talk about it too much, but um, Kevin um, did such a wonderful article and also encouraged me to do one. Oh God, <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get emotional. But anyway, it really meant a lot to me to be able to talk about it. And um, so anyway, I appreciate everybody's uh, um, words and wishes. So thank you. Thanks. Well, Deborah, you know, you, you, you help keep the site going. You're, you're like the uh, engineer in the engine room that nobody ever sees, but somehow or rather keeps the propeller spinning and uh, I'm forever grateful for you not to mention that you're my best friend and uh, have a damn good time with you, you know, so. Uh, oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> love you very much. Love you too. Cool. Um, we're gonna move on to the last person unless you have anything else to say, Deborah. Nope. Good, anyway, thanks. And um, last but not least uh, tonight is uh, uh, Jack Shepler. Jack Hello. runs a company called AOK. Um, it was a uh, one of those finds when you're you're shopping around for the right fit, um, uh, and Jack was the man, and uh, he took on a very big project. There's a lot of websites that are out there that are what I would call static websites. You kind of design them, and they're good for a year or two. Uh, then you got a website like ours, which is a dynamic website. There's new material every day or so. Uh, people coming and going, there's the form and there's pictures going up and all interconnected, not to mention a way that you can contribute to help support us, which all of you that have done so, we really, really appreciate it. Um, it keeps us from trying to make a subscription site, but we do have some ideas in regards to the contributions and future memberships. Uh, my goal is to always make this a free site, um, but I hope that we're providing good enough content and everything that you'd like to uh, um, help make the site grow by being a contributor. Um, there will be certain things that we might go behind the paywall on, such as uh, tutorials and videos that have a production cost to them that we need to recover. And, um, you know, so we may be doing things like that as we move on. But Jack, why don't you tell a little bit about your company and how you work with us and what you got in store for us? Because we do have a phase two we're about to enter into. And uh, Jack can share a little bit about that and get some feedback. Sure, so uh, I was definitely really excited when uh, Kevin approached us. I myself have uh, a past with photography. I, uh, I went to school for video production as well as web development. Obviously, I went the web development route uh, professionally. Um, in the uh, past, I was a concert photographer. I used to shoot all the big festivals. I shot Coachella, Lollapalooza, Pitchfork, Bonnaroo, uh, Fish. I, I did a lot of it. Um, but that was before I started my company and my company kind of uh, took priority. So I was very excited when, when we were approached for this. Uh, this website is unique, right? Kevin didn't just want us to throw up a form software and, and be done. He wanted it to be uh, very connected and, and uh, a unique experience, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this website was designed and developed to be, to compete with, with any of the other big uh, photography websites. So I feel like we, we, it came out pretty awesome. Um, and I was quite impressed with the audience that he was able, that you all were able to, uh, to gather for this, right? There's well over a thousand uh, members now. Um, that, that is uh, pretty impressive. Um, as well, when COVID hit, you know, uh, we, we track search engines and we watch, um, you know, uh, traffic and searches and all that kind of stuff. Photography took a big hit when COVID started, but the traffic on Photo PXL has continued to go up. So that's that was uh, really good to see, and uh, says a lot to the you know the quality of the content and the uh, the audience here. So, uh, uh, congrats on that. Um, so I have some new functionality to talk about today. Uh, we've been talking about this for uh, for quite a while, and um, the idea would be essentially to create some new user levels. So the details of, of what those are called and, and how you get those user levels are, are kind of up in the air. 
but I'll, I'll go over a few of the bigger items uh, that you can look forward to. So the first is the website being entirely in retina resolution. Uh, that will be a new user level um, experience for, uh, for all, all current functionality, by the way, will not, will not change. That will stay there. For the new user levels, there's these added benefits, right? Retina resolution for the whole site. Another is uh, when you're uploading photos to the website, currently you have to upload one photo at a time uh, and there, there's a space limit. Um, in the future, you'll be able to upload multiple photos at the same time and the, uh, the uh, file size uh, limit will increase with that, right? Obviously, if we're going to have retina resolution, you're going to have uh, larger files to upload. Another feature that will come is night mode. So for anyone that prefers to uh, surf the internet with a dark background or with a, you know, a darker screen, uh, you'll be able to toggle that on and off for your account. So anytime you log in to another computer, it'll keep that and it'll follow you around. So if you like night mode, uh, you'll get night mode. There's also some privacy features coming. Uh, there have been requests for, for a few of these and we just kind of put our heads together and said, okay, to, to really give the best privacy options, what could we offer to members? Um, some of those include uh, the ability to make your profile page private, like maybe you don't want your profile page to be looked at, um, or to not be listed on the member page, right? Uh, another would be if you don't want people to know when you're online, right? At the bottom of the form, it shows when, uh, who is online currently. If you don't wanna show up there, you don't have to. Uh, another is the private message feature. Maybe you don't want people to message you. Uh, you'll be able to disable that uh, in your account. Uh, another is that currently all photos allow uh, comments and member ratings in the membership section, or I'm sorry, in the uh, community section, and you'll be able to disable that uh, as well if, if that's something you want to do. Uh, some other features that'll come uh, with that uh, you know, with new user levels, there will be user level badges. There will be discounts in the store. We've been working on some new merchandise. Actually, if you go to the website and go to the uh, shop page, you will see uh, right now there's just a coffee mug. Yay, coffee <laughs> mug. <laughs> we all do. Yeah, everybody is put your order in now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you, those t-shirts? What yeah. happened to the, t the stickers, you know? Like yeah, the t-shirts are still there. There will be a whole lot more, though. There's going to be uh, sweatshirts and pillows and just all kinds of stuff there to yeah, order. Are <laughs> um, face mask. So, uh, oh, face mask? Yeah, that's something we're oh, working on, yeah. finding a good vendor for it. Have you thought of selling photo books on the store? That's a question for Kevin. <laughs> no, I, that's a good question. Um, it's kind of hard to sell a photo book when you can buy, well, like uh, a coffee table book by somebody else. Yeah, uh, well, no. a variety of different options, you know. Yeah, we're we're not we're looking at ones. We have a challenge with uh, our our photographer friends in in Europe and Australia uh, because, like any book you purchase from them, it probably costs twice as much to ship it. So yep. we we are in discussions about. Uh, doing fulfillment for um, authors and of, of books from those countries where they can uh, freight it over and then we can just add the U.S. shipping costs and save them a bundle of money. So um, those talks have started, but then they kind of started slowing down once the uh, pandemic kind of came and now they're beginning to pick up again as we kind of realize we're in a new world and how we can do things. So Yes, you know, if, even shipping between Canada and the United States is a tremendous trade barrier. Oh, yeah. It is absolutely unnecessarily expensive. Well, yeah. that's because we, we want to tariff you guys, or whatever we're doing. <laughs> Go on, Jack. Oh, um, beyond that, I mean, it, there was just a, a couple little added um, benefits. Um, Ron Copper early access, for example, uh, to the workshops. Um, <laughs> featured member site so that uh, there can be, essentially to, to highlight the, the users that uh, sign up for these new levels, uh, and then uh, Instagram featured members. So 
If anybody else has any ideas in regards to the, the things that we can do, um, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me because we, we are, you know, looking at how to do this. The site's been designed so that <coughs> these things can be added seamlessly. And, um, you know, I, once you see the difference between the resolution we have now and what Retina resolution does, um, I think you'll enjoy what that is. Um, so we'll have more to say on this and how we're going to do it because we're still kind of, you know, noodling it around. Uh, but it is something we hope to try to have implemented before the end of the year. Um, very honestly, you know, I've been uh, being very cautious with what I spend money on and adding things too soon as we try to figure out, you know, how we're all surviving and going to manage in the new pandemic and that we want to make sure that the focus we put on the site is going to be a benefit to the readers and that, you know, as our needs in regards to photography change, that, uh, you know, we're on top of that change and make sure that you know, we're offering the best content and material and, and experience more than anything else uh, on the PhotoPXL site. So um, your feedback is extremely important and uh, um, I, Jack's doing a great job. You have to see some of this stuff to see how it works and what we're going to be doing. So um, it's going to be kind of fun to do, I think, once it's there. And, and it's nice because we're growing all the time too, which is very, very nice. Um, so it gives me great encouragement that, you know, the investments we're making are going to uh, be a benefit for everybody. So, um, you know, I really appreciate it. Jack does an awful lot of cool stuff. If you guys need a website, um, I know I have, my son needs a website and he's into something special that uh, hopefully we can even do an article on if it works properly. Um, but uh, we'll be meeting with Jack next week about another project. But if you have a particular project or you have a website, or need for something, um, you can get in touch with Jack. I believe that there is a link at the very bottom of our page. It takes you to Jack's website um, um, at the footer of every page, I believe. If And uh, have a talk with Jack and his team. Um, we wouldn't be able to be here this quickly. None of, no, other, no other company we talked to said they could do the project that we had in mind in the time frame uh, that uh, Jack was able to accomplish it. And, uh, while he was late, he was only late by a week or two, you know, not, not significantly. And a lot of that had to do with we were changing scope as we were moving through things. So um, you know, he's got a great team working for him, and um, you know, it's, it's, it's been good. Anything else, Jack? Uh, I think that's it. Well, that's all I had in my notes, unless you have any, anything else. That no, I think up. that's just a teaser for what's to come. We, we, we've got some work to do before we... Um, you know, move to those next phases. But I think if you're interested in a site that really does retina and, you know, has a form and the community page that you can put your own photographs up on and you'll be able to put more of those up and share those with your friends and get uh, uh, critiques from them and so forth, it's, it's got a lot of fun stuff going on it. So um, it's, it's good to see. So we're always open to suggestions. The site is as much yours as it is ours. So I appreciate that. Jack, nice job. Thank you again for all you've done. For sure. As um, we wrap up this evening, um, we're getting to that point now where it's uh, time to say kumbaya. Um, this event's lasted a little longer than I, I thought it was going to, and I appreciate all those that have stuck around. Uh, we will put this up as an article, and we will um, uh, timeline it so that if you want to get to a particular part to see it again or – if you missed a certain aspect of things um, or you signed on late or whatever, you know, you'll be able to watch what you missed. So we'll get that up in the next week, I hope, depending on you know, where Michael can fit this in on his projects. Um, uh, Jeff, thank you very much for being part of things. Thanks very much for all the fun we have together. It's, uh, <laughs> I count you as one of those special human beings in my life and uh, I'm, I'm happy to have shared the many experiences I have with you. So. You can be a pain in the ass sometimes, but you're always a friend. Thank you, Kevin. That's actually very gracious of you. <laughs> and and Deborah, I'm just going across the line of speakers that are on here. You know, so far, thank you um, too. Um, I'll see you when the show's over. <laughs> 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 and uh, Alan and, and Natalie, um, once again, a, a, a big thanks for all that you've done for the site and uh, the friendship that we've had over the years. And, uh, <laughs> and all the things that have happened. Mark, um, there you are, you know, there's Mark. Uh, 
uh, you 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 fill a very special spot in regards to our our needs and readers and uh, the amount of detail you put into your work is is super appreciated. Um, your Thank inspiration you. in regards to that uh, works really well. Michael, God, what would I do without you? You're, <laughs> you're the man. Um, I hope that we can have a lot more fun doing videos. And we really wanted to have fun doing videos. And actually, um, I hope to get to be a little more funner in the future because um, I've been holding back. So we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes as, as time goes on. And then uh, Jack, uh, once again, appreciate all that you've done. And Chris, where would I be without you? You know, you're, you're one of my best friends and um, you're, you, we went through a lot to, to get here and um, I have a lot of very fond memories. So appreciate that. And uh, appreciate your wife's patience sometimes in regards to what you put into it. And um, it's always, it's always a lot of fun. So thank you very much. And uh, to all and, the and viewers, Chris, I really love your haircut. Did Chuck do it? I had the first haircut that I've had since the beginning of March. That's what I thought. You look very snappy. Yeah, Can I get a haircut? Cool. Those looks yeah, pretty I good. I think you need one, Jeff. Just a trim. <laughs> Fuck you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, thank you for hanging in there with us. Uh, thanks for Barney being part of the PXL t uh, team and family. Uh, we're trying really hard to follow our tagline of enhancing your vision and um, you know, I, I really, really, really thank all of you for being part of this. And uh, I'm all ears and eyes if you've got any suggestions and things. And please you know, check out all those websites I showed you, especially the Rockhopper workshops. Um, we're seeing a lot of good bookings. We're already sold out in all the Palouse workshops for next year. Salvard is, uh, I think we got probably, um, well, we only have maybe a half a dozen spots left on that workshop. We're getting a lot of interest in the Antarctica South Georgia workshop, which is like the ultimate, ultimate trip of a lifetime. Um, it's a, it's a longest workshop, almost 19, 20 days, but you will see things that you, you, you can't imagine. Um, I took Deborah to South Georgia four years ago. It was actually, we left on the trip the day Trump was uh, won the election in November of that year, same time frame we're doing this year. And, um, and you came back? You know, well, we asked it. We asked that the ship had enough provisions for four years, <laughs> and then we set up a dollar jar where, if you mentioned the word Trump on the trip, anybody, everybody had to put a dollar in the jar. And at the end of the trip, we had a big party, so it was kind of kind of fun. But as Deborah will remember, we were at this one spot in South Georgia, and this is one of those things that really is kind of life changing. And uh, we took a hike uh, with the whole group and walked through these plains, walked through seals, walked through this beautiful valley and came to the top of this one hill and everybody just almost crashed down to their knees and people were like almost sobbing because it was a whole valley and hillside probably with, I don't know, maybe hundreds or tens of thousands of um, penguins, uh, baby chicks and like this whole mass of penguins and it was just, um, you know, kind of moving and it was just incredible. You, it was just hard to imagine. There was such an amount of life there. And, you know, uh, we spent hours there and the penguins would come up to us and you could sit on the ground and take great pictures. And um, it's, it's really hard to believe there's places on earth like what we see in the South Georgia, the Falklands, especially Antarctica. So uh, that will be our premier trip at the end of next year. And please, if you want the ultimate adventure, especially not only of your lifetime, but for photo photographic purposes, that's the trip to think about. Anyway, I could go on and on, um, <laughs> having a lot of fun in life, and I intend to do that as long as I can. And I want to thank all my team and all of you one more time. Uh, we'll be doing more of these, a little more focused next time, and uh, I'm going to see if I can get everybody online so you can see everybody in a little more interactive. But uh, thanks for being here tonight, and uh, we'll see you somewhere out there in the near future. And uh, please stay safe and stay healthy. Take care of yourselves. Good night.